This is the Remington Model 11, which for most purposes is the same as the Browning Auto 5. For basic operation, see my earlier video, Basic Firearms Tutorial Number 6. This video will demonstrate how to disassemble the Model 11 or Auto 5 for cleaning and maintenance. First, as with any firearm, ensure all ammunition has been removed from the weapon. This video presumes you already know how to do this. My earlier video illustrates the process. Lock the bolt to the rear and engage the manual safety. My earlier tutorial video illustrates the differences between the manual safeties depending on age and manufacturer. Brace the butt solidly and pull the barrel to the rear. While holding the barrel, release the magazine cap. The fore-end and barrel can then be removed forward. On unaltered models, there is an internal cap restraining the magazine spring. If this has been removed, the spring will be released when you remove the magazine cap, so take care when removing the cap to control the magazine spring. Extended magazines are available for this model, and some of these use separate collars. Their operation should be obvious. The friction ring and spring, compression ring, and recoil spring may be removed forward from the magazine tube. Note their relative positions, I'll revisit that during reassembly. This should suffice for routine cleaning, but I will now show how to remove the bolt and access the inside of the receiver. The bolt is under heavy spring pressure and has considerable mass. Injury will result if the bolt is allowed to slam forward with fingers in the ejection or loading ports. Restrain the bolt, press the carrier latch button, and ease the bolt forward. Using a correctly fitting screwdriver, remove the small lock screw, then the rearmost tang screw. Remove the buttstock from the action. If it's stiff, you may need to use a non-marring mallet or something else soft and padded so as not to mar the wood to strike gently on the comb here to break it loose. Remove the lock screw on the left side of the receiver. Then remove the forward trigger group pin. On the Remington this is an unthreaded pin. On the Browning it's a threaded screw. Use a correctly fitting punch to drive it out from the right side of the receiver. Remove the rear trigger group screw. Some of the slots on the Remington and Browning screws are very narrow, so you'll have to find or make correctly fitting screwdrivers. I use the B-square set, their part number T0045. The trigger group can then be removed from the bottom of the receiver. Remove the carrier spring. Note how its forward end must be moved around the flange of the receiver pin on which it rests. Remove the carrier screws from either side. Some models or some specimens will have lock screws here as well. The carrier may then be removed. The bolt spring is powerful and under considerable pressure. Take care to prevent damage or injury. Carefully drive out the bolt spring stop pin. You may be able to grasp the bolt spring guide and press down on the rear guide with your thumb to partly compress the spring which will ease removal of the pin. Take care when removing the punch to control the guide and not let it fly out.
bolt spring and rear and forward guides may then be removed. If you have an older weapon which has not been disassembled at this level for some time, there may be considerable fouling in this area. Furthermore, the rear bolt spring guide itself is made of wood and may be quite fragile, so take care while removing it. This is a simple piece, so if you know someone with a lathe, you might want to have a replacement made out of brass, bronze, aluminum, or some other appropriate metal. On the other hand, this one is over a hundred years old and is still intact despite having seen heavy use. Note that the bolt spring tube is threaded into the receiver tang. Make sure it's screwed all the way in. Some of these will be brazed in place instead, possibly as a repair. With spring pressure removed, move the bolt rearward until its cross pin lines up with the takedown hole on the left side of the receiver. Drive out the cross pin. This will also release the locking block catch and its spring. Take care not to lose them. Move the bolt rearward while swinging the link bar out through the bottom of the receiver. Restrain the bolt handle and move the bolt forward through the front of the receiver and out. The bolt handle can then be removed through the ejection port. The bolt can be disassembled further. Note there are differences between Remington and Browning in the bolt. The Browning has two extractors, the Remington only one. If necessary for repair or replacement, the extractor can be removed and replaced by driving out this pin which goes through the top of the bolt and through the bottom. To disassemble the bolt, press in on the firing pin. This is the older square type. The later type is round. And drive out this cross pin. When removing the firing pin, take care to not lose its return spring. The locking block and link bar can then be removed through the top of the bolt. All of this can then be cleaned. If necessary, the shell stops can be removed from either side of the receiver by removing these long, narrow screws on the underside of the receiver. Take care to not lose the springs beneath each shell stop. Also take care to not lose the carrier latch button on the right side of the receiver. Reassembly is mostly the obvious reverse. To reassemble the bolt, insert the link bar through the top and the locking lug in its track. Insert the firing pin and spring. The old square type will have the notch on top. Insert the cross pin. Insert the bolt handle through the ejection port and slide it rearward in its slot. Insert the bolt through the front of the receiver. Slide the bolt handle into the bolt. Slide the bolt assembly rearward until the cross pin hole lines up with the takedown hole. Insert the spring and the locking block latch before reinserting the cross pin. 
you'll have to compress the locking block latch in order to get the pin through it. The pin has to be driven far enough to center and clear the receiver walls. Insert the carrier. and the two carrier screws. Replace the carrier spring. It pivots on the rear receiver pin, touches the carrier, and hooks under the forward receiver pin. With the bolt all the way forward, insert the bolt spring and both guides. Insert the pin to restrain the rear bolt spring guide. It should be centered so that it bears on both sides of the tube. Press the carrier latch button and depress the carrier, then insert the trigger group front first. You can then insert the forward pin to give it something to pivot on. You'll then have to reach inside to depress this part to clear the linking bar will make contact here. Then the rear screw can be inserted. Rotate the forward pin or screw on the Brownings so that the locking notch is aligned with the locking screw. Replace the buttstock. Replace the rear tang screw and its locking screw. There are three combinations for the recoil spring, compression ring, and friction ring. The friction spring goes around the friction ring. Probably you should clock the openings in the spring and the friction ring like the gas rings on an AR. For heavy loads, the recoil spring goes on first, followed by the compression ring turned so that the funnel will compress the friction ring, followed by the friction ring itself. For lighter loads, the compression ring is turned aft with the funnel aft so it doesn't compress anything and is placed behind the recoil spring, leaving the friction ring by itself in front. There's a third position, apparently for the cuts compensator, a muzzle brake, or, per, or for super light loads, with the compression ring and friction ring both behind the recoil spring. You'll have to adjust these components depending on what loads you're using. Also, the amount of lubricant on the magazine tube will also affect cycling. With the recoil components in place, replace the barrel. And the fore end. Lock the bolt to the rear. The barrel will again have to be compressed to replace the magazine cap. Once reassembly is complete, perform a dry function test.
This should conclude the basic disassembly and reassembly of the Remington Model 11 and Browning Auto 5 semi-automatic shotguns. For detailed disassembly, see the Gun Digest Book of Firearms Assembly Disassembly Part 5 Shotguns.